My husband's gonna kill me. Stay tuned for Air Gun Detectives. Welcome to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. I'm JC, your host. Today, we get to take the mystery out of the Diana Airbug. Yeah, we're going to determine if this is a good bug or not, that's for sure. But hey, do me a favor before we get started, if you hadn't already, hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. It costs you absolutely nothing, but it really supports the channel. Also, check out my website when you have the opportunity, www.airgundetectives.com. On that site, I've got my Generation 2 bipods, t-shirts, hats, and a few other things. I got some new accessories coming as well. All right, let's get back to the Diana Airbug. Well, Diana, traditionally, a uh, German company that's made some really high-end air guns. So this one is actually really affordable. It's 130 bucks. That's what I've seen it for. And it comes in both 22 and 177 caliber. And this is a 12 gram CO2 uh, target pistol. Let's show you what you get in the box here. So it actually comes in this nice case, which that doesn't happen too often, but it's got a nice case here. Little handle on there. You can see we're all set up right here. We've got our manual, it's pretty thick, several languages, and then we've got our gun. And this is our CO2. It also comes with the 22 caliber has a um, seven shot magazine and then it comes with a single shot tray as well. So let me move this stuff out of the way. All right, so what do we have here? This is actually really good looking gun. It's got a nice textured grip handle, hardwood stock. It's got uh, a two stage trigger that can be adjusted. As I said before, it's got the single shot tray right here so you can see this just slides in and out that's simple there's a little magnet on it to keep it in place or you have the magazine and that slides in as easy as this it also has a little magnet but this slides in just like that so then you have your option of either this particular model I have here is in 22 caliber as I said they make it in both 177 and 22 and this is designed as a target pistol they're claiming in the 22 caliber, it'll do up to 460 feet per second. Um, it's got fully adjustable rear sights on it for ele um, elevation windage. It's got um, 11 millimeter dovetails here too. So you can actually unscrew the rear sight and remove it and you can actually put on some scope rings and we'll probably show you that as we get into this, maybe in the target portion. The trigger is a two stage trigger. Uh, they say it's about a two pound trigger. Let me tell you something. This can be adjusted anywhere, I believe, from three pounds down. So we'll go ahead and play with it and we'll see how well that works. The gun itself weighs about two pounds. It's a two pound gun. It's got a really nice finish on it. And in addition to that, uh, we've got a, about a 14 inch length overall. That's from the um, front to the back of this. And the barrel itself is actually 8.3 uh, inches. They're claiming you're gonna get about 50 to 60 shots per CO2. So we'll see about that. I know it can be decocked. For instance, the bolt's back, hold the trigger down, close the bolt, and you can decock it. So the question is, for 130 bucks, seems like you're getting a lot of stuff here. How well will it perform? Well, let's find out. So stay tuned for the next segment. All right, we're gonna do uh, five shots over the crony with our air bug. We'll average it out to a type of velocity we get. We're going to use just the RWS Hobbies, they're about a 12 grain pellet. So let's see how well it does. Okay, shot number one. 449. Shot number two. 449 again. Shot number three. 454. Shot number four. 456 and actually I'm out of pellets that's good we'll just do four for today anyway you see what the average is so let's move on to the next segment all right let's test our little air bug here our 22 cal for some accuracy now I gotta be really honest with you guys I was shooting this at our normal 10 meters the 32 feet it's boring I was putting one pellet on top of the other it was absolutely boring 
So I thought for fun that we would bump our distance and come back to where we usually test our rifles at a full 20 yards. So what we'll do is we'll see how well this groups, but I want to thank Splatterburst. We're going to go ahead and use an 8 inch target and we'll just be aiming for center mass here, but wherever it groups is fine. We don't really care if it actually hits in the bullseye. We just want it to group. And we're going to be shooting uh, some Meister Kuglin Segei, just said 14 grain, and I'm going to shoot five shots again. One more time, I'm going to see how well it groups. But go ahead and take a quick look at the distance we're shooting from. Yeah, it's our usual distance. So let's go ahead and shoot five shots. <clears throat> and hopefully we'll do well with our little air bug here. All right. Shot number one. That one's a little low. <clears throat> Shot number two. And let's go for shot number three. And shot number four. Remember, this is CO2 pistol. And one more shot, shot number five. So you guys got to remember, CO2 pistol shooting 20 yards. I'm impressed. 22 caliber. Look at that group. Not too shabby. All right, let's move on to the next segment. All right, let's test the trigger on our air bug. These actually have pretty nice triggers on them. I adjusted this down a little bit to make it a little bit lighter, um, but didn't do anything else. This is, pretty, this is pretty much right out of the box. Just adjust the trigger um, just a little bit. All right, we have our trusty Lyman trigger gauge here. Let's see how our pool weight is. All righty. 14 ounces. Yep, I have that set at 14 ounces. What's the great thing is you can go from anywhere from 3 pounds to 14 ounces with this trigger. I just have it set up for our target practice. So, not a bad trigger whatsoever. Let's move on to the next segment. My favorite portion, any reviews of plinking. So we're going to uh, be back our same distance. Go ahead and take a quick look there. We've got a metal ram, shotgun shell, a cork, a couple little items, a piece of aluminum. So let's see how well we can do is just uh, knocking those down. Like I said, we're probably the max distance you want to shoot this, but it does have some pretty amazing accuracy. So let's just see how well we do. All right. That's our cork. A little piece of aluminum there. That green. Well, it was a, some type of little old medicine bottle. How about our shotgun shell? Yep. How about that white PVC? I'd say that was a hit. And last but not least, our metal target. That hit with a little authority. That 22 caliber does pretty well, guys. It really does. A lot of fun, especially with that seven round magazine, the 22 caliber. Let's move on to the next segment. All right, let's wrap this up with our conclusion here. How did our airbug do overall? I would have to say excellent. But like any gun that I do review, let's talk about the negatives first. I have very, very few negatives on this. The only thing I would talk about a little bit, the trigger guard here just seems to be a little small. So if you've got some bigger fingers, um, it's going to work, but it's just going to be a, a, you know, a tighter process getting your finger in there. That's it. That's it on the negatives. So let's talk about the positives because I have a lot of them. First of all, the accuracy. As I um, told you guys earlier, I was shooting this from the typical, this is a target pistol. So your typical range is at 10 meters. I was shooting roughly at that 32 feet. It was boring. I was putting a pellet on top of a pellet. That's why I pushed it all the way back to 20 yards. And even at 20 yards, we got, what did we get, 0.43 inches center to center? I mean, think about it, four tenths of an inch on a CO2 gun. That's pretty amazing. Also, which I absolutely love about this, is the trigger. The trigger, seriously, this can be adjusted down. You saw it, I had it down to 14 ounces. 
but it's incredible. It has a nice first stage where you start to pull the trigger and then you can feel it almost gets soft like it goes into a valley and it hits a wall. And then just a little bit more pressure, the gun fires. So it's really predictable. It's like an excellent, excellent target trigger. And that's without me even touching it, just simply adjusting it the way it comes. Because usually I have to take these things apart and polish them and do all that. Didn't have to do any of that with this. Uh, what else? The wood grips on this are fantastic. It really fits nice in the contour of your hand. Very solid. It's good, good, good target grip. And from what I understand, too, they make lots of um, aftermarket accessory grips for these as well. You can pick those up. Uh, the other good thing is we did get um, our velocity. They claimed about 460 feet per second. We were averaging close to 450. And with a li even a lighter pellet, we're going to uh, definitely accomplish that. That's for sure. And uh, we did get about 60 shots per CO2. And let me show you actually how to load the CO2s in this. First of all, I want to show you something. If you can see this up close, is there's a little window in here. So you can actually see if there is a CO2 in there. But it'll also help if you get a CO2 that happens to be stuck in there. You can get it out that way. So your CO2 goes in. I always like to put a little bit of um, pell gun oil or some type of um, silicone oil on the tip. That just helps lubricate the gun. You're going to slide that in, then you're going to follow with this. And what this does, it puts obviously uh, screws in and puts pressure on the back of the CO2 and pushes it into the piercing pin. So you get this nice and snug, get it up there. If you have to, there's, a, there's some holes in this cap, if you can see the holes in the cap. And what you're going to want to do is just take a little wrench, something that'll fit in there, and then you can just snug it up just a little bit, just like that, so you can get it snug. But notice now, you can actually look in the little window here, and you see there's a CO2 in there. So in the reverse process, if we were taking this loose, and your CO2 gets stuck in there, let's just say, because sometimes it does, it makes a good seal in there, and you can't quite get the CO2 out, this little opening can allow you to put an object in there and kind of just help help force the CO2 out just a little bit. It's not that hard. See, it just comes out like that. So that's your options there. Anyway, um, I love the fact that this comes with both, you've got your both your magazine and you have the single shot tray. And the big difference between, if you guys didn't know this, between using the magazine and the single shot tray, if you want the ultimate accuracy, you use a single shot tray. And that's simply because when you set a pellet on the single shot tray, you're not going to deform the skirt whatsoever. If you put it in the magazine, it, it, there is a tendency that it could deform the skirt a little bit as you're pushing it through the magazine into the chamber. So in the single shot tray, if you want the ultimate accuracy, it's one pellet at a time, but that pellet's going to go in there real clean. So that's really the big difference between the two. Another huge bonus on this, do you notice where the bolt is on this gun? You notice the bolt is on the left side of this gun. This is a right-handed shooting gun. So a right-handed shooting gun, you then get to pull the bolt with the left hand. So you get to pull the bolt with the left hand, which is great. Well, most of the gun manufacturers, when they come up with a single shot um, pistol, and let's look at the, the Crossman here. I've got a Crossman real quick. Let's move this out of the way for you. If you'll notice, look what size the bolt's on. The bolt's on the right side. So if you're shooting this right-handed, to reload it, you're going to have to either fold the gun over and come over with your left hand and cock the bolt. You've got to have to pull the bolt back. Or you're going to have to take your hand off the grip and you're going to have to switch hands, what have you. So it's really not that advantageous for a right-hander with a bolt on the right side. Now with a rifle, it's a whole different story. But with a pistol, it's not. So you got to hand it to Diana. They actually thought about that by putting this bolt on the left side. And it's a really nice bolt. It's even got some rubber O-rings on it, so it's very comfortable to pull back. And it's very smooth, very smooth. What's also nice is that the finish is really nice on this gun overall. I still find it hard to believe that you can pick this up for 130 bucks because it is really, really nice. So it's a lot of gun at this price, that's for sure. And how would I rate this gun? What do you guys think? Pfft, come on. Five stars without a doubt. This is a five star gun. For you to be able to get this in either 22 or 177 caliber, it's a highly accurate CO2 gun. The trigger is incredible. You don't even have to do anything with it except adjust it. And it even comes with a case. I mean, if that's not a five star gun, 
I don't know what is. So, Diana, you did a great job with the air bug, I have to say. You definitely did. So anyway, I want to thank you for tuning in to this episode of Air Gun Detectives. Don't forget, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. I hope you and your families are having a very healthy uh, wintertime, I guess, as we're approaching it, and you're getting a lot of shooting in. So until next time, take care.